Hi everyone! The last video got ridiculously long, and I made a few boo-boos along the way when recording this particular workflow, but I decided to still share it for those of you who are interested in making conversions to the vanilla body. So here we go, a bonus video to squeeze in between our other conversion videos, <laughs> complete with my mess-ups and how I fixed them. I'm going to follow the same process shown in video number 50 to convert our demo top to the vanilla female body shape. The process is almost the same, except there are a few extra steps and considerations that are required because of some quirks specific to this body. And like in the last video, I'll remind you that we are not addressing how to handle physics enabled outfits just yet. Here are some things you need to be aware of if you're going to make a conversion to the Skyrim vanilla body. First off, only CBBE and TBD come with resources to help reshape the outfit to the female vanilla shape. However, these may not mimic exactly the size 0 or size 1 vanilla shape, so you'll probably need to do some additional tweaking. For example, the CBBE vanilla shape is close to size 1, except in the chest area. If you make a CBBE2 vanilla slider using the vanilla reference shape in the CBBE shape data folder, you will then need to refit the chest manually to be closer to the size 1 vanilla shape. Another complication is that the vanilla body is never nude, so it comes with underwear. This would not be a big deal except that when you remove either the bra or the panties, there are holes in the body mesh. If your outfit does not cover those parts, you're going to have to get creative. And we have to do some workarounds for weight painting and size conversion sliders. The third complication is that the vanilla body has transforms that you need to clear or else it's going to make things weird. You will need to create clean versions of both the size 0 and size 1 body and body parts to use for making sliders. And you should use those fixed bodies and body parts in your outfits as well. Please refer to video number 40 if you'd like a refresher on how to clear transforms. So we are going to turn the CBBE reference outfit that we made in video number 47 into a vanilla outfit by using a backwards conversion slider. And as I already mentioned, this will be done just like we did for UNP in the previous video. Load in the CBBE reference body, or you can bring in the vanilla to CBBE reference slider as I've done here. Please ignore what I'm doing to remove textures from the body. This is just to get rid of nudity for the sake of YouTube. If you've loaded in the vanilla to CBBE slider, then you first have to move it to 100% and set base shape before you can make the backward slider. Then go to slider, new slider, and give it a name. Click the pencil, go to slider, import slider data, import NIF, and navigate to the CBBE mod, caliente tools, body slide, shape data, and References folder. Select the Vanilla to CBBE NIF and hit Open. Click the pencil to exit Slider Edit Mode. Check that the slider works as expected, and then bring in the CBBE Reference Outfit, which can be found in the Shape Data folder if you are pulling this from a CBBE Body Slide compatible outfit mod. Hide the body that came with the outfit, or just delete it if you are sure that you know which partitions you need the new body to have. Since I know that this outfit only uses 32 body, I'm just going to delete the extra body now. OK, now conform all, and then move our backward slider to 100%. Check and address any major distortions before you set base shape. This is a really simple outfit, and it looks fine, so go ahead and go to slider, Set base shape. This is now our draft vanilla size 1 outfit. I was a bit naughty while I was recording this and I started editing the mesh before bringing in the new body. I suggest that you always bring in the new body first 
because the shape may not be identical to what you've got in here with the slider. In any event, the point is that now is the time that you should begin editing the mesh as needed to fit your new shape. Here in the recording, I finally remembered to bring in the size 1 vanilla body. I have copies that I have already fixed, all the transforms, as you can see with this folder here, but I'll bring in the original one that I extracted from the Skyrim BSA to remind you of how to go about fixing these transforms. First, go to the Bones tab, tick Show Pose, and hit Apply to Mesh. Then go to Shape, check for bad bones, and click OK. Next, double-click on each vanilla mesh to open the Properties window, go to the Coordinates tab, and set all the XYZ values to zero. And make sure this box for Recalculate Geometry's coordinates is ticked on and hit OK. And finally, for good measure, go to Edit and Reset Transforms. All right, now we get on with the refitting. As I noted, vanilla bodies are a problem because of the missing body vertices. For this outfit, I decided to just keep the vanilla panties because I need them to cover up that big hole in the body. But these vanilla panties won't work for texture sets on this outfit since the outfit textures don't fit on them properly. So we need to keep our outfit panties in the mesh list in the right order so that we don't break the texture set. As a workaround, I'm going to delete most of the vertices on these panties and just hide the rest of it inside the body. Fortunately, we can go ahead and delete the bra that came with the vanilla body since the top covers up where the boobs are missing. With the underwear mesh selected, mask the panties, then go to Shape, Delete Vertices to get rid of the bra. There are a few little bits to tidy up here on this mesh, so we continue tweaking to fix clipping and other issues until we're happy with how the refitted outfit looks. When you are ready to move on, go ahead and select the outfit meshes, not the body or the vanilla underwear in this case, and remove the weighting. To do this, go to the Bones tab, select all the bones using Shift-Click, unless there are custom SMP bones, which you will exclude, and then right-click to delete from selected shapes. Before we can continue, we need to make a couple of tool meshes with the vanilla body. If we don't, things will get really weird because of these big gaps in the body mesh. For example, if we copy bone weights, our outfit is not going to get sensible weights where it overlays those body gaps. There's a couple ways you can fix this, but we're going to do that by making a whole body reference, and we'll use this for both the weight painting and for a size conversion slider. We did this already in video number 44, but let's go over it quickly here. Bring in the size 1 vanilla body, feet, and hands. If you are using unfixed Skyrim versions, then go through all the steps again to clear the transforms from all these meshes just like we did before. Now prepare to merge them all, first by removing the texture from each mesh, and then set all the partitions to 32 body. With that done, merge the shapes together Paying attention to the merge order because you're going to have to do it exactly the same for the other size body. I always start at the bottom and go up. You can do it however it makes sense to you. Once you are left with a single whole body mesh of the vanilla body, be sure you ignore the outfit meshes, then export that to a location of your choosing. Next, bring in the size 0 vanilla body, feet, and hands and repeat what we just did for size 1. Clear all the transforms if you haven't already, remove the textures, set all partitions to a single copy of 32 body, and merge the meshes in the same order as we did for size 1. Then export the whole size 0 body mesh as a NIF, and then delete that one from Outfit Studio. Here is where I should have gone ahead and done the weight painting, but 
I had a major brain fart and A. I didn't weight paint, B. I didn't fix the body partitions, C. I forgot to export my size 1 NIF, and D. I did the size conversion first. Instead of re-recording to pretend like I never make these kinds of mistakes, I decided to keep this in here to show how you can recover if, or maybe I should say when, this sort of thing happens. If you want to do this correctly from the start, then the steps I mentioned are the ones you should follow. All right, walking through what I actually did in this video, I went ahead and made the size conversion slider next. Select the size one whole body tool mesh, go to slider, new slider, and give it a name. Then click the pencil, go to slider, import slider data, import NIF, and navigate to the size zero whole body tool mesh that we just made. Select it and hit open. Click the pencil and test the slider. This looks good. Note that if you messed up the merging order, then your slider won't work. You'll have to remake the merged body meshes again, making absolutely sure that you do them both in exactly the same order. Now set the whole body tool mesh as the reference, conform all, move the slider to 100%, correct any major distortions if you have any, which we don't, and then set the base shape. Now edit the meshes as needed until you're happy with how they look. This one needed some work, but for the sake of time, I'm going to fast forward through all of that. It was about this time that I realized I had not done the weight painting or exported my size one NIF, but I carried on to complete the size one outfit first. So weight painting came next, and since we have the size zero outfit now, we should use the size zero whole body mesh to copy bone weights. So deleted the size one version and brought in the size zero version. Then I set that as a reference. Now select the outfit meshes and we can skip the body and the vanilla underwear since they're already weighted. And then we right click and copy bone weights. Next, Check the partitions, and they should all be 32 body for this outfit. Note that I forgot to check the body mesh here, which will come back to bite me later. Be sure you check the body and match its partitions to the original outfit. Then go to the bones tab and check some poses to test out the weight painting. Tweak the weighting or edit the meshes further if you need. Note that vanilla weighting is janky. So don't get too crazy here trying to make things look perfect. When you are happy with the outfit, export it as your new size zero NIF. I'm putting it into the demo mod. You can put it wherever you want. And here you can see I even named it wrong. So the moral of this story is don't mod when you're tired. At least I finally realized that I didn't save the size one NIF that I made first. So to fix that, I just made another size conversion slider using the whole body meshes. I selected the size zero whole body tool mesh, then went to slider, new slider, named it, and hit OK. Then click the pencil, go to slider, import slider data, and import NIF. Find the size one whole body mesh that we made, select it, and hit open. I like to hide the slider body and make everything else visible so that I can see the results from the slider better. Then conform all and move the slider to 100% to see how it looks. This looks pretty good so we can go right to slider and set base shape. Now we go ahead and delete the tool slider body and then edit the mesh to remove any last clipping and fix any other issues. Checking some poses is also a good idea to look for more clipping, but don't tweak any more of the bone weights here because you want your size zero and size one mesh to have the same bone weights. When you are happy with a size one outfit, select all the outfit meshes and export as your new size one NIF. Once again, I'm putting this into the demo mod and here I realized my naming mistake, so I fixed that too. Both of these NIFs now have to be optimized in NIF scope 
following the steps that we've done before. Order the meshes just like the original, which should be body, top, outfit panties, and then vanilla panties so that we can preserve the texture set. Here is where I finally realized that I didn't fix the body partitions, and having the calves and forearms on this body mesh will give us invisible gaps at the ankles and wrists, so we have to fix this. I went ahead and fixed a few more things before going back into Outfit Studio. I corrected the mesh order on the other size, and then I renamed the vanilla meshes, which you can do in the header tab of Nifscope. There is more to optimize, but I went ahead and fixed the partitions next. So I saved both of these NIFs and closed them up. Then unload the current project from Outfit Studio. Bring in each of the outfits separately and change the partitions so that everything only has one copy of 32 body. Then select all the meshes and export them. I just saved it over the original, which is a little dangerous, but should be fine in this case. Repeat that for the other size. Now we open them both again in NIFScope. The mesh order should have stayed the same, but here we can see that the vertex description flags are wrong. Right click on this line, select vertex flags, and untick the boxes for colors and eye data. Do that for all the meshes as needed. Be sure not to remove colors from this line if a mesh actually uses vertex colors which ours do not. Now remove bogus nodes and then remove unused strings. And if needed, you can face normals and update tangent space. For SMP outfits, make sure the XML file is linked exactly the same as it is in the original NIF. Repeat all those steps for the other size and that should do it. Save both of the NIFs Put them into a mod using exactly the same file path and file names as the original, so they will overwrite the old meshes. Then jump into Skyrim to test. Take note of anything that needs fixing and come back into Outfit Studio to tweak as necessary. One word of advice here, the vanilla body is low poly by today's standards and the weight painting is pretty awful. You probably aren't going to be able to make a vanilla outfit, especially a close fitting one like our demo top, look brilliant unless you want to mess around a lot with refining the meshes. And that's it. An outfit converted to the vanilla body and ready to put into the game. I hope you found this useful even if it was a bit long and pretty strange. Our third official conversion video is up next, so I'll see you again soon for that. Bye.